Hello everyone, welcome to lab six. In this lab, we're going to discuss the ramp time parameters and how those work on the Movi Drive. The acceleration of a motor is a crucial point to get correct because it affects the tuning and the operation of the machinery. Let's start this topic by viewing some travel diagrams. In a simple definition, the acceleration is any change in speed or direction. This can be from zero speed, to something faster, or this can be from one operating speed to a different operating speed. The first example we'll look at is a hoist coming up. The hoist can have positive speed or negative speed. This example will have the up direction represented as positive speed. The hoist will start with zero speed and then will accelerate to a higher speed until it reaches a constant speed. After a while, the motor will decelerate back to a slower speed, which happens to be stopped in this example. This diagram is shown over time, so this process can happen as quickly or slowly as the machine requires. So this diagram doesn't represent the distance of the position change. Let's look at the same hoist example again. But now we will combine the hoist coming up and coming down. This diagram is over time again, so this can happen as fast or slowly as needed. You're going to see the same thing before where the motor is stopped, then accelerates to a constant speed, then after some time decelerates back to being stopped. Once the hoist is ready to go down, it will accelerate to a negative constant speed, then decelerate from the negative speed back to being stopped. The speed up and slow down areas of this graph are where the motor has acceleration, but how can we determine how long that time is in seconds? The motor drive doesn't have a parameter to enter the acceleration value directly, so we have to convert the time desired to accelerate into a ramp time parameter. Before we get into calculating these times, let's give some definitions. The first definition will be a speed change, which is the difference between the final speed and the initial speed of the motor. Let's look at this using a speed and ramp graph to visualize it. For this example, the final speed will be 3000 RPM and the initial speed will be zero RPM. The difference or the speed change between these two speeds is 3000 RPM. The next definition we have is the ramp. This is the amount of time it takes to complete the speed change. With the Moby Drive, you can customize different ramp times for the acceleration and deceleration. For this example, we can say the desired up ramp should complete in two seconds, and the down ramp should complete in one second. These times may be the desired ramp times for the cycle time of the machine, but sometimes the ramps have to be longer than desired because of the mechanics of the application. We saw in the last lab activity that the Moby Drive has parameters for the ramp times. There are four standard ramps. There are acceleration and deceleration ramps for both directions of rotation. There is also another ramp that is an alternative for any scenario when you want to use a different ramp than the four standard ramps. This is the ramp up equals down parameter. The only time this ramp is used is with a dedicated input that is set to a speed ramp changeover function. This parameter doesn't have a slash in front of it, which means the function is active high. So the input has to be switched on to use this alternative ramp. Now let's demonstrate the equation we use to convert from a ramp time parameter to the actual time to accelerate and vice versa. I haven't mentioned this yet, 
but the Moby Drive's ramp time parameters are scaled on a speed change of 3000 RPM. So this value is a constant value in the Moby Drive that we will need to include in our conversion equation. Since this is a fixed value, then if the speed change is less than or greater than 3000 RPM, then the value entered in the ramp time parameter will not equal the actual time to accelerate the motor. If we know the two speeds that the motor will be accelerating between, then we can enter in that difference in the speed change value of the equation. Then if we know the desired acceleration time, we can enter that in the acceleration time portion of the equation. And then this equation will result with a ramp time parameter that we need to enter in the Moby Drive to achieve that acceleration time between that speed change. What can we do if we already have a ramp time parameter entered and want to determine what the actual acceleration time will be? Well, we can use algebra to rearrange the equation to get the acceleration time on the other side of the equal sign. When the equation is rearranged, the value that is in the Moby Drive ramp parameter will now go here. And if we plug in the difference in the speed change, we can determine the actual time to perform the acceleration of that speed change. Let's work through an example where the speed change is different than 3000 RPM, which is the constant value of the Moby Drive's scaling. The start speed will be 500 RPM, so the motor will already be turning, and the end speed will be 1500 RPM. The desired acceleration time between these two speeds should be 10 seconds. The first thing we need to do is determine the speed change, which is the final speed minus the initial speed. So we get a difference of 1000 RPM. Now for this example, we want to know what ramp time we should enter in the Moby Drive to achieve the desired acceleration time. So we're going to use this version of the equation. Now we can plug in our known values into the equation. When we work the math on this, we will result with 30 seconds. This is the value that you need to enter in the Moby Drive ramp parameter. You can see here that this seconds value that's going in the parameter is very different than the desired acceleration time of 10 seconds. And this is because of the scaling in the Moby Drive. So the reason we work this equation is so that way we can relate the desired real time acceleration to be a parameter in the Moby Drive that works with its scaling. Now let's talk about the different stop types the Moby Drive can have. The first is the immediate stop. We saw this demonstrated in the last lab when we triggered the controller inhibit terminal while the motor was rotating. When that was triggered, the power to the motor was switched off immediately and the brake engaged, which caused the motor to have an abrupt stop where it jerked. If the motor didn't have a brake, then it would have coasted for some time until it came to a stop. This is called an uncontrolled stop because everything stops immediately. The next stop method is a regular or normal stop. We saw that in the last lab when we removed the direction of rotation inputs. This was a controlled stop because the motor was decelerated to zero RPM using the ramp down times in the parameters. Then the brake was applied to hold the motor in position. And since this motor had a brake when the motor was stopped, the output stage of the VFD was cut off to the motor because the brake will hold the motor in position. Now the motor drive could have its parameters configured in a way that keeps voltage and current on the output stage even after the enable is removed. So I just want you to know that the output doesn't always cut off at the end of a stop condition if the parameters in the Moby Drive are set so that way it keeps the output on. But in our case, since we were using a brake on the motor, 
The output did cut off after the break was engaged. The next stop type is a rapid stop. We saw that in the last lab when we turned off the enable input. We also saw that when we changed the fault response parameter to be a rapid stop. The rapid stop ramp has its own parameter. Once the motor is stopped, it will apply the brake and then cut off power to the output stage. The other stop type the motor drive can have is an emergency stop. This is reserved for fault conditions that have the response parameter set to be an emergency stop, which has a specific parameter for the emergency ramp. Once the motor has come to a stop, the brake will apply, and then the output of the VFD will shut off. I mentioned it briefly in the last lab, but generally, the emergency ramp is used for specific fault scenarios where you want the deceleration ramp to be very short when the motor drive issues a fault. Let's go into the software and demonstrate these ramps and see how the ramp parameters will relate to the actual acceleration time between two different speeds. Let's test this equation by operating the motor with different speed changes and different ramps. Here's a table of values, and if you're following along, I want you to use the equation and calculate the ramp time parameter for each scenario. We will keep the speed change the same for simplicity. Feel free to pause the video here to give you enough time to calculate these, and I will show you the solution next. Okay, if you have those calculated, then here is the solution for the ramp times using the equation. All right, now that we have these ramp times, let's go into the parameter tree and then enter them, and then we will test the motor through each scenario. So I'm going to go into the parameter tree. And so to run this, let's open up our display values parameters. Let's look at our binary inputs of our basic unit, our option card, And let's close this and let's change our set points. So let's go to our speed ramps, which is folder one, item 13, speed ramps one. And we can see that the default setting is two seconds for all of them. And then the ramp up equals down is set to 10 seconds. So let's change these to the values that are in our table. All right, so our first ramp should be 60 seconds, then 45 seconds, 36 seconds, 24 seconds, and then our up equals down ramp will be 18 seconds. Now that we've made those changes, let's test run this motor and use a timer and see if these ramp time parameters that we have set will actually give us the acceleration time that we desired. So to run this motor, I need to activate the external fault terminal, so that way we do not cause a fault. So now you can see that that input is now on. And then we can see that from the last lab that DI6 will be our set point speed. So we actually haven't set that yet. So let's go ahead and set our set point speed. So that will be in folder one again, and then item 16, fixed set points one. And let's change our set point speed to be 1000 RPM to match our speed change. And then also, so we don't cause any confusion of what our actual speed change is, Let's change our minimum speed parameter to be zero RPM. And our minimum speed parameter is going to be in folder three, motor parameters, item 30, limits one. And let's take it from 15 RPM down to zero RPM, so that way we have a full speed change of 1000 RPM. Let's close this. And then we can collapse folder three. Okay, now our external fault terminal is on, so we'll clear the motor drive from its inhibit. And then now we will give the enable signal. And then we also want to give our set point speed of 1000 RPM. Now to test this, we will give our direction of rotation input and then see if 60 seconds in our ramp time parameter equals our desired acceleration time. So we'll test this with a timer. 
And then here is the clockwise direction of rotation coming on. Okay, now we are at 1000 RPM. So now if I deactivate the clockwise direction of rotation, we should use this 45 seconds ramp time that we have entered. So let's use our timer again, and then let's test that. Here we go, the input is now coming off. Okay, now we are stopped. Now let's test our counterclockwise direction of rotation. So we'll have our timer ready, and then we will activate the counterclockwise input coming high. All right, and now we're at 1,000 RPM. Now let's test our down for the counterclockwise direction of rotation. So I'm going to deactivate counterclockwise direction. Okay, so we can see that with the ramp times we have set, it has given us acceleration times that were very close to what we desired. Now let's test the ramp up equals down parameter of 18 seconds. So to get that to work, I first need to program an input to be the speed ramp changeover. So let's change our input assignment in folder six, then item 61, because I'm going to assign it to the expansion card. And then let's add it for digital input 11. Let's change that to speed ramp changeover. Here it is in the list. Okay, I need to activate the inhibit on the mobile drive first, so let me do that. Then I'll click on OK. Now let's try that one more time. All right, now we can make the change. And the way this works is this function does not have a slash in front of it. So that means it's not active if there's no voltage going to this input. So if I want to use the speed ramp changeover, I need to make sure I turn on this input. So let's go ahead and just close this parameter setting window because we can see the setting here. And we can collapse six. Now let's turn on our digital input 11. And then let's test all of our directions of rotation again and see if we use this ramp time of 18 seconds. So here we go, let's clear our inhibit. Now let's do our clockwise direction of rotation, accelerate. All right, now we're at speed, so let's try the decelerate. Okay, it's looking pretty consistent. Let's try our counterclockwise direction. Okay, and then let's try the deceleration. All right, and we can see that for each of those four scenarios, up clockwise, down clockwise, up counterclockwise, down counterclockwise, that we use the same ramp for all of those because we have our input active for the speed ramp changeover. So that way it's using 18 seconds all the time. In the last lab, we tested the external fault terminal with the stop ramp T13 of 10 seconds. Now let's propose a scenario that I want the emergency ramp to occur in three seconds in real time. What ramp time parameter would I need to enter in the emergency ramp parameter to achieve a three seconds acceleration time based on a 1000 RPM speed change to keep things simple? You can pause the video here to calculate that and then I will show you the solution next. 
Okay. If our speed change is 1000 RPM, and we want our actual acceleration time to be three seconds if we trigger an emergency ramp. So that will be a setting of nine seconds in our emergency ramp. So I will change this to nine seconds. Now let's test that. But before we can test that, we need to change our parameter from the way it was set in the last lab. So we need to go to our fault responses and then change that to be the emergency ramp instead of the stop ramp. So we will go to folder eight, unit functions, then item 83, fault responses. And let's change the response to our external fault back to an emergency stop. All right, now we've made that change. We can close this parameter window. We can collapse folder eight. Now let's test run this again. So I'll just try it in the clockwise direction. And I will turn off the speed ramp changeover so that way we don't have any confusion of the ramp that it's using. Now we'll turn on the clockwise direction of rotation. This will take a little bit longer to get up to speed because now we're using the original ramp of 60 seconds. All right, now we're at 1,000 RPM, and let's activate our fault condition, and then let's time to see if it is using the nine-second ramp. And let's see if with a speed change of 1,000, if it gives us the desired three-second acceleration time. So now I will trigger the fault on the movie drive. Okay, it is now stopped, and we can see that was very close to three seconds. So now let's turn off our direction of rotation. And then let's reactivate our external fault input. And then let's try this again for the counterclockwise direction one more time. So I need to reset the fault. Press reset. And the reason I turned off the direction of rotation is so that way after the fault was reset, the motor drive did not automatically restart. All right, now let's go ahead and give the counterclockwise direction of rotation and try this one more time. It's using the 36 second ramp for the counterclockwise up direction. All right, now we're at 1000 RPM. Let's trigger the fault again. Okay, now we can see that was very close to three seconds of actual acceleration time, even though our emergency ramp parameter is set to nine seconds. Okay. So this was a good experiment to show you that the ramp time parameters that you can visually see are not always the real time acceleration that will happen because that depends on the actual speed change that's occurring and how the mobile drive is scaled based on a speed change of 3000 RPM. So you will want to understand how this equation works so that way you can calculate what the correct parameter value should be depending on what you want your real time acceleration to be. If you already have a running machine and you just want to calculate what the real-time acceleration should be based on the current parameter settings, if you know what the speed change is, then you can just flip the equation around like we showed before and then plug in the value that's currently in the parameter and find what the actual acceleration time should be for that speed change. Okay, in the next lab, we will change to a different startup mode and use the encoder on the motor for better control. For this to work well, we have to tune the motor performance. So we're going to learn how to do that too. Thank you for your attention. Take care and have a good day.